Okay, uh, first of all, uh, you know, looking back on our, on our game, uh, watching the film, real pleased, uh, really uh, uh, you know, with our complete team, uh, real proud of our players defensively. Uh, you know, I thought we played with great energy, uh, hold the team to the rush yards that we did. It was real impressive. Uh, we disrupted the quarterback at times, got to him a few times too. I thought that was really good offensively. set up uh, you know, to finish this thing strong. So had a good practice last night uh, playing an Arizona State team at 6-2, uh, and two, really good team. Uh, Kenny Dillingham uh, is doing a super job. You know, he's from there. And that's his home hometown. And uh, you know, his team is playing uh, with his personality. Uh, their defense, uh, I think they're number 25 in the country defensively. They're very good against the run. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll get after you. And then offensively, they have a running back. Good test for us. Uh, looking forward to going out out west. Question. Coach, I know for Dylan Risk is a phenomenal starting debut. It's going to be hard to replicate those stats in the future, but just for a first time outing, when you watched the film, what stuck out the most? What maybe surprised you? And what were you most yeah. impressed with? Well, you know, Dylan knows the offense. He's been around here the longest. He knows the offense really inside and out. Uh, you know, he really managed everything well. Uh, the game slowed down for him you know, for the first time. Starting that was real impressive, probably the most impressive thing. And he made a couple mistakes early, but he settled down and uh, you know, he made some good plays in the past game. He made a couple with his feet, too. You know, it was a big third down uh, when we were backed up with that, but uh, he handled himself extremely well and uh, was very efficient in the past game. Yes, you, know, you talked about last week after you gave the play calling to Tim Harris, you know, how much you kind of stayed away a little bit, you know, went with the defensive side of things. And, yeah. What did you see from Tim? And, and I know he talked a little bit last night about how he, he, he gave him some environment, he gave him some helpful hints here and there as well. Like, what did you see from him his first time calling a game? And how, and how much it means to him and for him growing up as a high school coach and getting an opportunity to do that? Yeah, I, I got a lot of confidence in him. And like I said, he's been around here and been with me a lot. And so, uh, you know, he's been waiting on this moment. Um, and uh, he sees the moment. He did a great job. I had good command of, of what they were giving us. And, Coach, we talked a lot about the goal late in the season is to continue improving. All the good teams do that. Um, obviously, this team's seen a lot of changes on the field, a lot of changes on the sideline with the coaching staff. What is the big thing that you felt like was cured in, in the Arizona win, and was this enough of a reset to get a push? We had changes, and like we said, I mean, that, you know, sometimes uh, you know, change, uh, change is good. Uh, there was a lot of positive vibes on the sideline, even from the start. taking a step back to begin the season and being able to observe and watch and then now getting into the defensive coordinator role. Do you can't find like a newfound confidence in him to being able to grow? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think thing with, with Addison, I mean, that was a learning experience for him last season. And then we brought in some some uh, veteran guys, some very talented guys. And then the guys that have been here, you know, they uh, have a lot of confidence in him. And it was good for him to sit back and see things from a different light, I believe. Guys played extremely hard for him. Uh, it didn't surprise me at all. Um, and, uh, he did a really good job, you know, uh, managing the game as it went. You mentioned Kenny Dillingham a minute ago. How do you how do you describe his personality and what you're seeing on film from Arizona State that reflects it? Yeah, he has. A, I mean, first of all, he has a dynamic personality, and uh, you know, he's an extremely hard worker. He was a smart guy the year he was with me. He helped me out a whole lot. Football, uh, he can relate to players. He's got all the attributes to, to being a, a really good coach. So it doesn't surprise me at all that he's got that thing going like he does. And uh, he's got some good good coaching staff around him. David Gibbs is a guy that's an off the field guy that is out there with him too, obviously, that's been with us. So there's some familiarity. Coach, 
Coach, you said the goal moving forward is to make a bowl game. Does that satisfy the expectations coming into the season? Uh, you know, it is what it is right now. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, we didn't didn't foresee it going exactly like it is. But what we can do is control what is ahead of us, and uh, we're real happy with the way we've played, the way our guys responded to a tough five-game stretch. Um, and now we're trying to finish it. And you know, it's one game at a time. And that's the way we're approaching it. We're playing a six and two team on the road in our conference. I think everybody knows in this conference there's a lot of. Uh, Teams that are that are good teams, and you got to play well to win. Um, so you know we're taking one game at a time. And, you know our, our goal is to make a bowl game, and to do that, you know, we got to play good football. Jim obviously had that great season with Jimmy last week. What are the challenges now in preparing for this first road game? Going back to the second. Well, I, I think a road game. I think you just said it. I mean, I think that's the big thing. You know, at home it's a different deal. You know, it's quiet. We can articulate the things, and you know, on the road it's going to be loud. Dillingham has that place where you know it's going to be loud. Those guys, those people are going to show up, and you know we're going to have to handle the noise. And that'll be the biggest challenge, I think, for a new starter. With the late couple young guys like Chase and Johnson stepping into the starting lineup, back to back weeks. Yeah, I mean he, uh, you know, he's been a guy that uh, he had a great spring first of all. Uh, you can tell that his skill set, and then he's you know done a really good job for us. He's got a lot of confidence in him right now, and. Uh, he's Game you guys had over the weekend. How can you use that kind of performance to make a resurgence going into these last two games in the season? Yeah, well, the good thing is we played our best overall game. Uh, you know, and like I said, we made some changes. Uh, it really gave our players some new life. I know you get a chance to talk to some of our players, and they can speak on it probably a little bit further. But uh, you know, we got got a little new energy, and uh, we got three games left. And, you know, we got to finish it one game at a time. The teams you've played from out west when they've come here, they've left the day early just because of the travel and the time change and stuff. You're going out west. Is there anything different you do? Do you go early? Do you stay overnight? Yeah, no. You know, the, the, the good thing for us, we'll go keep our normal routine. Obviously, it's a long flight. That's probably the biggest difference. But we have an off week, you know, next week. So it's not like we got to rush back and routine and all that. So uh, we'll keep the same plan. We'll have to leave a little earlier and all that and have a long flight. But uh, we'll try to stay on. Yeah, the best I wanted to ask about SJ Tui is moving on. He's been a great deal to this program, and I think he was part of your inaugural staff here, yeah. first chief of staff, and did a lot with the Kingdom. Just what was his impact these last few years? Yeah, SJ was one of the more important uh, people, if not the most important uh, person uh, since I've been here. Uh, not just setting our program up when he was the chief of staff, the right hand man, but uh, what he did with our collective, starting from scratch, is unbelievable. And he laid a foundation. Say enough good things about him. I mean, he's in AD world now, and he'll be an AD and a big shot before long. And you know, I'm real proud of him, and uh, you know, really proud of the person he is. Yes, um, RJ had another big performance on Saturday night. Does, is there anything he does that doesn't doesn't impress you anymore? I mean, based on what he's been able to do this season. Yeah, he uh, yeah he, he he's impressive. Uh, and, and what I appreciate about him the way he prepares, the way he practices. I mean, it doesn't matter if we went through the five-game losing streak or a game like that. He comes and plays his A game every day in practice, and I think he's one of the big reasons why the other guys have let up. And we got some other leaders that set the tone, too. But, you know, he didn't say much. Uh, but when he does, people listen. Uh, you know, he spoke to our team before when we were at the hotel before the game. And it it, it uh, resonated with a lot. Coach, you mentioned that you love play calling and it was hard giving it up. But do you think giving it up has allowed you to concentrate and make, have better control overall of the team? You know, I, I, like, like I said, I think the big thing as a leader, you got to do what's best for your team. Um, this day and time, I mean, uh, the, the job description of a head coach, like I said, the last year, maybe year and a half, it's like accelerated. It's a, it's almost like a different, I'm not going to say a different profession, but the so much more, and uh, so I just evaluate everything, and that was best for our team. You know, obviously, Tim sees the moment. It was really good for me to be with the defense more, and, and I was with Coach Addy more during the transition and all that. And so, uh, yeah, you just do what's best for your team. That's what
what I felt, felt strong about doing. Do you feel like you're able to apply more discipline, being able to be on all parts of the team now? Well, I, I don't. I, I think more being on top of things is probably the best way to put it. Um, having a better feel for everything that goes with it, and, and not you know in the film room worry about third and one or fourth and one. What stands out to you about Arizona State during the Kansas State um, the challenge that the defense you, you got a game tackle. That's what I'm saying. He breaks tackles. Uh, they did a really good job last week, you know, scheming up, throwing to him and getting him in situations in the past. But he's a he's a dynamic player. Um, you know, it really starts with him. Coach, was the playbook completely open for Dylan? And if not, does it excite you that you, you can probably take on more after the next one? Yeah. So he knows the offense. You know, he's been here for what a little over two years, so he knows the ins and outs. And, you know, Tim could call anything. He has a good understanding of the whole thing. And, you know, I think that showed. I mean, there were some new wrinkles, some new new plays and all that. And so, yeah, he uh, he, he can he can execute, you know, the, the whole playbook. You mentioned during this uh, press conference of the night that there's comparing and scaling. Uh, what stood out to you about just the way you've absorbed information over the course of the season? That kind of thing? Yeah. Um, like I said, he had a lot of reps. He understands the passing game uh, extremely well uh, with protection. Everything goes with it. You know, RPO game, he does a really good job uh, with understanding you know, his reads and really everything that goes with it. And it just carried over. I mean, it was uh, what he did for the first start. I mean, it was really hats off to him. I mean, it was really a phenomenal effort. Um, he played with uh, great effort. He played with great toughness. He blocked on a guy. No, we we got to help him. We don't want him to, to block, you know, guys uh, <laughs> moving forward, you know, unless it's for the game. But I just love, you know, he's playing like it's a Super Bowl. I mean, and that's who he is. And, you know, real proud of him. He sees the moment. He's a great example for all the other younger guys that we have on our team about just seeing the moment when the opportunity presents itself. Do we want Coach, your next two games are away. I know you got the bye week in between, but how do you help your players prepare for all that travel? Yeah, I think the big thing, like we said earlier, is going to be the noise more than anything, uh, being on the road with, with uh, a quarterback that hadn't started on the road. Um, you know, as far as this, you know, this time of the year, you just about have your routine when you travel. And so it's not like a shock to your system. The only difference is the five-hour flight, you know, Yeah, I think when we spread the ball around, because you saw earlier in the season, teams would double uh, Kobe and, and all that. And the fact that we're getting more guys um, involved, it helps everything. And not only does it help everything, it helps the run game too. It all kind of works together. Speaking of uh, Jacoby, obviously he was trying to get his confidence back early in the season after an injury last year. Two 100-yard games back to back. What's he been to this team? Yeah, he's playing with a lot of confidence right now. I mean, you know, you've seen it probably the last half of the season in practice, his confidence, like, and, and getting uh, everything that goes with it. It's more familiar with the offense. And then, you know, when he is, when he's got the ball, he sees the moment. And he's tough to handle after the catch. I mean, I think you can see that. Uh, but uh, couldn't be more happy for him. He's a wonderful human being. And, uh, you know, he's waited his time and he sees the moment. Coach, we never had to ask you a couple weeks ago. A former player gave a call, released a letter to you saying, "Yes, he called in Swift for Chief of Staff Ross Newton." Do you have any response uh, to that? Yeah, you, you know, I, I've only kicked off one person since I've been here, and that was because of uh, an arrest. All right, um, wish him nothing but the best. Coach, uh, offense and defense both had strong games. Special teams uh, wanted to hear your evaluation of them. Gave up three. What was it? Three fifty-yard punts, uh, three inside the twenty. They want to know how you felt about the special teams' performance. Uh, we've got to catch the ball. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing. The hidden yards right there. And I think the big one for me was the ball was down there on the five-yard line, and they flipped the field. I mean, the wind was blowing a little bit, but we got to back up. We got to put him in better position with that. They pinned the ball down to one. That was kind of a tough one. It's kind of raining, and the guy kicked it, and that was a tough one. But the one that you know. Had on the five yard line. We the hidden yards right there. That was 
that was disappointing with that. But we got to help them out. We got to move them back on the wind floor. Yes, yes, you mentioned this a little bit earlier, but I mean, how much of, of, of you know, getting that win, breaking that losing streak, how much of a relief did you notice in the locker room and maybe in practice with some of the players? I mean, be able to put that behind them now and kind of turn focus. Yeah, I mean, just you know, the, the guys have hung in there, and just to see the smile on their faces in the locker room and to play a good, clean football game. I mean, that was a great feeling. Yeah, can, can I ask real quick about uh, Coach Dillingham? Because he was with you, I know you just answered an earlier question, but he's with you in 2019. I know he'd been with Mike Norvell. I know he was a young guy at that point. He's still a young head coach. But when he was with you for that year, did you see future head coach uh, in Kenny Dillingham? Yeah, you know, he got a special thing about him. You know, I went to visit uh, Mike when he was a head coach in Memphis. We spent time and watched practice and got a chance to meet him there. And you could just tell that he has a dynamic personality and really made a positive impression on me and then you know obviously when uh got a chance to hire him as OC that had a lot to do with it and then Mike's confidence in him and too and so I uh, got a chance to spend a year with him and I mean, he helped out a lot and, you know obviously we uh, had a good year Bo Nix's freshman year and uh, he did a good job so it doesn't surprise me at all uh, he's a young guy but uh you know he doesn't act you know I mean he, he's got a gift. Thanks everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks,